Okay, and I welcome you officially to our sweet little yin yoga practice today. And we're doing a flow for the legs today. And we're basically working with the quadriceps, the adductors, the hamstrings, and the IT band and the adductors. So we go through all different poses um, working with the legs and hopefully um, stretching out nicely. And like I said, yin yoga to me is a very meditative practice. It is some, a lot happens on a physical level, but to me, this practice was very challenging in the beginning because I'm a very flowy person. I like to move. When I move, this gets me out of my head. And when I'm holding a pose or when I have to be still, I'm really challenged or I used to be really challenged because um, it was not really my comfort zone. I, I, I like to move. And now I feel like oh, it's so nice to get more into meditation practices, to get to do yin yoga practices because it's really what I need. It's so good for me to get still, even if it's challenging. And I notice and I catch myself how my mind travels and then I bring myself back. But it's also really beautiful to have this opportunity in a practice that's not just a meditation and sitting still, but to have this opportunity to really explore and to just watch and observe and to notice how many times our mind wants to take us somewhere else how many times we are resisting how many times we want to control what's happening each moment or we want to judge the experience that we have in our body why is my hip so tight why is my leg feeling this way and what we're learning and really encouraging and emphasizing with the yin yoga practice is really to come to a place of acceptance and that every day is different. And that even now that we are in this time where for sure something new is happening, when we resist this flow, this time, we're like creating stress. And when we're creating stress and when we're having and feeling a lot of stress, our immune system also goes down. So right now, even more so, it's really important that we find ways to kind of nourish our body and to relax and nourish our nervous system so that we're not feeling so anxious and stressful because then we're even more receptive to any virus any disease and more stress which is not the idea so instead like really enjoy to try new ways and to really have like new neurological pathways by using the brain in new ways and um, to really imagine that we're like building some kind of new world maybe that's a beautiful way to look at it and life happens now so we don't need to feel like we're waiting. We're waiting for life to happen again or we're waiting for when this is over because right now we have this moment. And if right now the internet goes out or the electricity goes out or a rainstorm comes, then I'm also accepting that this is happening right now, this moment, and I make the best out of the situation. So maybe we can see it in a way like this. Right now, life still happens. This is life right now. And we're writing history. This is a moment in time that we're going to talk for years and ages about. Back in 2020, remember when the coronavirus happened. And so, I mean, we're like in the middle of a huge shift and um, also a place of opportunity and change. So let's see if we can... Uh, embrace change and see how we can also really make um, the best out of change and deal with change and allow change to happen or to be there without wanting to control it or fix anything about our situation. So let's start with a little meditation. And as always, feel free to use a wall to lean against or sit on a pillow. And then close your eyes and take a few moments here to just be still. And notice what is your relationship to stillness. Is it something where you feel really comfortable? Is it something that maybe is really challenging you? Has your relationship to stillness shifted in this time of lockdown? and with all the practices and being in your home all the time. 
So just explore that. And again, without judgment, to see what is your relationship to stillness? What comes up when you become still? What do you feel right now, this moment? How does stillness feel in your body? Is there a sense of like <sighs> something settled? Or is there a little nervousness or restlessness that you feel underneath your sitting still? And just become aware of it. And I always And I always love to check in at the beginning. I always call it, we'll take a little snapshot of ourselves so that then at the end of the practice, we have the opportunity to really remember, oh, this is how I felt at the beginning. Oh, and this is how I feel right now. So how has the practice maybe shifted something in me? And a couple more breaths here, just feeling the breath. Softly going in, going out. And then I'd like to start with a little visualization. And I want you to just imagine your breath now going in through the left nostril and crossing over the bridge of the nose and exhaling through the right nostril. And then you're inhaling through the right nostril and you watch the breath going over the bridge of the nose and exhaling through the left nostril. You're just resting your hands. So this is just you're following the breath with your closed eyes and you just feel it going up and down, alternating your nostrils. And what this breath does, it's calming and balancing your nervous system and the right and the left side of your brain. And we'll do a couple more rounds. Just keep watching breath going up one way and exhaling the other way. And then the next time when you are exhaling through the left nostril, just release any effort and come back to your natural breath. And maybe you become aware of that part of you that's been observing and visualizing the flow of the breath. And take your hands together in front of your heart. And let's begin with one sound of OM and let's make it a soft yin sound of OM. Nice big breath. Oh. And then slowly release your hands and gently open your eyes. And if you are already on your mat, then make sure you have your props. And we'll start, I'm moving back. We'll start in one of my favorite poses, which is butterfly pose. So I recommend to have blocks or books or anything you have. I'm gonna turn this way so you can see me from the side. And in butterfly pose, you're gonna bring your feet forward and they can be together, they be, can be closer, they can be further away they can be a little open. I personally like to have my feet a little open and then I like to use blocks and you can use as many blocks as you want. And for me, I actually bring them a little closer. I really like to rest my forehead onto the block and then rest my arms 
on my inner thighs or shin. And this is perfect for me. Now for you, take the first minute or so to really find the pose. And even if you're all the way up here and you can only go this far because of your back or any restrictions, it's okay. Maybe you're super bendy and can go all the way down. That's okay. Wherever you are, this is where you are. I'm going to put the timer. And we're going to hold this pose for about four minutes. And I recommend to close the eyes. And when we close the eyes, it's a little bit easier. Um, we are less distracted from everything that's going on around us. So especially in the beginning when the mind might still feel quite busy, it's really nice to sink in and really focus on your breath. And as you're leaning forward, you can also focus on your spine, biggest energy channel in your body. And so yin yoga is often, um, it's based on the Chinese medicine and it's often explained with the flow of energy through the meridians in the body. But we can also apply the more classical yoga view of nadis, which is that the spine is the biggest nadi in the body. It's called the shushumna nadi. And the next two biggest nadis are moving from the bottom of the spine, the root of the spine, like spirals to the left and the right nostril. And they are called the ida and the pingala nadi. And they also represent sun and moon, which again is the yin and the yang and how we are balancing with our breath those energies. So I always like to think of those big energy channels. And then the yogis say that we are having about 72,000 little nadis in the body. And I find yin yoga is a beautiful practice to really visualize how all these channels you know, are filled with energy, nourished with energy. So we are still in butterfly for about two and a half more minutes. You can be wherever you feel the pose. For those of you who just arrived to our yin practice, welcome and just use as many blocks and props as you need to join us for the sweet practice. And maybe in your practice today, if this resonates with you, really pay attention to if there's anything that wishes to be expressed. So as I was talking in the beginning, now we are in this kind of situation of change that still is up a lot. It's also an opportunity to clear out stuff. So we can clear out our apartments, our closets, which is very liberating but we can also clear out thoughts, patterns, um, and make little shifts and changes. And maybe with that clarity, there's also something new that we feel, oh, like a new idea, a new creativity, a new, um, yeah, a new idea that just wants to express and wants to move through you. And maybe as you become still, you'll hear a little inner voice or whatever you want to call it for something wanting to be expressed. We have about 30 more seconds here.
And then take three more breaths here. And with your third breath, very slowly find your way back up. Place your hands behind and just move your knees a little bit side to side. So again, our flow today um, focuses or targets the fascia of the legs and all the different parts of the legs. So the first pose already worked with the inside of the legs which is related also to the liver. And we're moving now into the next pose, which is again, also targeting the inner legs. And we're gonna come into straddle pose. So I'll sit back a little bit more. When you come into straddle, have your blocks ready. Let your feet fall out to the side. Most important for yin is really not to engage muscles. You can sit on a pillow, which also helps to shift your pelvis a little bit more forward. And then find your way into the pose. So to me, I'll show you my favorite way. I like to place a block and then place my head into my hands. And this is really nice. I feel the stretch in my lower back. I feel a deep stretch in my inner legs. And I like to close my eyes and really visualize this line from the inner ankle all along the inside of the leg to the inner groin and how energy moves there. Of course, you can also place your head onto the blocks again, like we did before in butterfly, if you prefer. For those of you who maybe are really open in the legs, you can also come forward onto your elbows or all the way down if that is accessible and available to you. Just remember, we're not engaging any muscle. And the idea is to surrender and let go into the poses. So we are cultivating patience with our yin practice. When things are not moving, you can get very restless. I get very restless. And so this practice invites me always to be patient and to notice my restlessness. And to really keep observing and to just stay in the moment. When our nervous system is in a fight or flight state, when we're like in panic mode, we are not able to have any clear thoughts. So if we have the intention or if we try and practice to come to stillness, there's less resistance and maybe also a way of feeling less stress. Keep breathing. Maybe you are a very visual person. Then besides visualizing the lines of energy, you could also just visualize a beautiful landscape a big lake with really quiet, calm water, like the beautiful lake in Switzerland. I miss those lakes. They have this crystal clear turquoise water and there's mountains with snow caps. So if that's calming to you, then maybe travel there. Or maybe you like the warmth of sitting on a beach, looking at the ocean and just feeling the waves of the ocean coming in and going out. The beauty of a sunset. And all these things in nature, what they have in common is to really just 
bring us to the beauty of this moment. We're watching a sunset. We're not thinking about the next hour, the next day, the future in any way. We're not thinking about the conversation we just maybe had or the fight we just had or what's in the past. We're really just in awe of watching the sunset. So one more minute here. And then take your last three big breaths. And with your third breath, very slowly find your way back up. And often the head is the last thing to lift because the waist um, the most. And then you can just place your hands back and just sit here for a moment or maybe gently wiggle your legs. So again, we're targeting all the different parts of the legs, all the different muscles, or the fascia, I should say. And we're gonna do one more forward fold now, which is called caterpillar pose. So bring your legs together now. Lift the flesh off your sit bones. And again, feel free to sit on a pillow. Now, if this one is too much on the back of your legs, your hamstring area, even if you're not engaging muscles, feel free to put your legs up the wall or up along the table, um, legs of a table or a chair or anything. If you're okay here folding forward, then again, use your blocks. Place them in between your legs and bring your legs maybe two fists apart and rest your forehead, rest your arms on your legs. And once again, so you might feel this stronger in your back as well. It's okay that your back is round. To me, this is a beautiful pose to really again visualize the spine and every little vertebra and how we're creating space between the vertebras. And this one we're gonna hold also for four minutes. And try to just really stay rooted in awareness, observing. Another beautiful idea here is to do the humming breath, the Brahmari breath. So as you fold forward, this is a really easy one. If you like, you can just hum on the exhale and it goes like this, you're inhaling. Mm. Brahmari breath and every time you exhale you make the sound of a humming bee. This is beautiful to clear your throat and it's really nice in one of those forward folding poses. So give it a try.
So remember our intention is to relax, keeping the muscles soft and to really work with your breath, the regular breath or the primary breath for those of you doing the B breath. And we're doing yin to kind of expand or improve the range of motion and the heads of our tissues. But I feel we're also doing it not just to improve the range of motion physically, but also to range of motion of our breath, of our thoughts. And which goes again into how can we expand what's something new that's growing and wanting to be expressed coming out 30 more seconds here Good, last big breath. And then again, to come up, keep your back nice and round and just very, very slowly lift your head and come back up. Place your hands behind and just shake out your legs. And place your hand behind fingertips pointing towards your feet if you don't have them already here slide your feet underneath your knees and then inhale lift up into a tabletop and exhale come back down let's do that two more times inhaling lifting up exhaling down last time inhale lifting up exhaling down and straighten your legs, shake them out. All right, so now we'll move into half shoelace. So you're gonna bring your right knee on top of your left leg. You can take your hand and kind of slide the flesh out a little bit. And you have the option again to rest your forehead onto a block, oops. And your arms can just rest next to the body. And again, you can use as many blocks or pillows or props as you need. And breathe here. Remember to let the left leg relax. This is called half shoelace. And so one option is to stay here the whole four minutes. Another option would be for those of you who feel they could go a little deeper to come into full shoelace, in which case you would bend the left knee as well and then walk forward and bring your shin to your knees. I'll turn to the front so you see your feet would be going out to the sides and then you can come forward and rest shin onto your knee maybe or just be here with your hands and just go as far as you can hmm. and again you want to be able to relax into the pose so if it's too intense you can just go back to the regular half shoelace and stay here
last 30 seconds here. And with your next breath, very slowly, come all the way back up. And now swing your right leg, which was on top, all the way back and bring your left knee forward so that you can prepare for swan. Now, if you have any issues with your knee, wait, I'll show you the modification. Those of you who are fine here, you could also use a block on the knees or a blanket pillow, anything goes. Just make sure that the knee is kind of outside of the hip. And if your body wants to fall to your left hip, no problem. And we stay first up on the fingertips. This is called swan. You know it as pigeon from vinyasa, but the poses have a different name in yin because they have a different energy. So we're not engaging muscles here. We really want to be able to release. And then from the seating swan, when you're ready, walk your hands forward and come into the sleeping swan. And breathe. For those of you needing to modify for your needs, you can come onto your back, place your left foot above the right knee, and just gently interlace your hands above your right chin or behind your right thigh and roll a little bit more over to the right cheek to make the stretch stronger on the left cheek. Beautiful stretch. So choose one of the two. And since this is often a really challenging, strong pose, notice where your mind wants to travel and really try to stay present. Maybe go back to this beautiful landscape. And just try not to start thinking about anything from the past or from the future and really try to stay here with your stillness, sensations in your body and really consciously relaxing your face, your jaw, your breath. Just feeling the nourishment of the pose. And the stretch, I often call it, it's, it's like a sweet pain. So for me, this is Still intense, but in a good way. And if it's too much in the full swan, then just go to the modification. We have about two more minutes here.
Always come back to your breath to go deeper or to soften any tension. Really pay attention here to your jaw, your neck, your shoulders. You sometimes hold in the funniest places. And we have one more minute here on the side. And take your last three breaths. And then you can slowly walk your hands back. Tuck your right toes under. And now swing your left leg up into the sky. So it feels really good to come out of this pose. Shake it out, make circles or anything that feels good. And then release your left foot down and just stretch out your legs. Ah, feels good. Stretch one heel to the floor, bending the other knee, and then switch, really pressing the heel down to release the back of the leg. Good, and let's float the right leg up into the sky, shake it out, and then bring your right knee outside of your right wrist. Good. And again, take a few moments here to find your variation, your swan. First, we stay in the seated swan. If that means you're rolling over onto the right cheek, that's okay. Press into your fingertips to really feel the stretch. We're stretching um, the stomach and spleen meridians as well, which are running along the front of our thighs, along the front of the chest. So you might feel even a nice stretch in your belly, your chest. Those of you needing to modify, you're going to come to lie on your back and place your right foot above the left knee. Clasp your hands and roll over a little bit more onto the left cheek to create more stretch in the right cheek. And those of you in the full swan, you can now walk your hands forward for the sleeping swan. And of course, sometimes both sides feel very different. So. Take moments here to check in. What do you need on this side? Do you need to make any adjustments compared to the other side? And feel whatever is present here. When you think of the fascia, or you want to visualize the fascia, it's really also amazing. It's like you're, you're sitting below a tree and you look up into the tree and there's all these branches, small ones and bigger ones. And the fascia is, looks kind of like that. It's just really beautiful web of um, threads. And um, it holds everything in place. It keeps everything together, all the organs. And if the fascia would collapse, everything would collapse, all our organs would collapse. So we want to keep the fascia kind of juicy and fluid because as we get older, it starts to dry up. One idea is that we keep a lot of the water in our body actually in the fascia, which is fascinating to think of. Because don't you wonder if they say we're like 70, 80% water in the body, where's all the water? So it makes sense to me to really think of it being in these fine lines and threads of the connective tissue. And 
and keep watching your thoughts, sensations, and your response to them. Try not to change anything. Kind of just receiving. And everything just flows through you. Remember to soften the face, the jaw, your breath. Maybe exhaling through the mouth. About one more minute here. Can you stay present for the full minute with your breathing and breathe deeply? And maybe one more big breath through the no uh, through the mouth, a big breath in. <sighs> Last three breaths. And with your third breath, you can slowly walk your hands back. Roll over onto the right cheek so you can stretch your left leg in front. And shake it out. Nice. Good. So we're ready for shoelace on the other side. So now you're going to bring your left knee over the right. Right leg is completely relaxed. Foot falls out to the side. Feel free to take the flesh out from underneath. Inhale, lengthen. As you exhale, fold forward. Feel free to place your block here. And then those of you wanting to come again into the full pose, you would bring your right leg, right foot to the left hip. So left knee is on top. Inhale to lengthen, exhale, you would fall forward. And Again, whatever is comfortable for you, you can stay on your hands or you can bring your chin to your knee, wherever you are breathing. I also really like for this one to place my hands and kind of push the floor away. Breathing here. <sighs> Exhale through the mouth is always an option. We call this one 
for three minutes. So we have about a little over two minutes left. And maybe if this is all about finding new ways, you can also apply that to yin practice and maybe find something new to focus on. If usually you focus on your breath, maybe now really visualize something or focus on the sensations or the parts of your body where you feel the biggest stress focus on softening your faith so this is how we keep the practice interesting to not always just keep doing it the same way 30 more seconds Maybe an exhale through the mouth. <sighs> Last three breaths. To release, slowly lean back, unfold your legs, place your feet a little wider than your hips. Take a moment here, feel the relief. Sometimes it can be super intense working these poses and then feel free to switch your legs over from side to side. Your hips can come off the floor, whatever feels good. And I wanna work now one more pose for the front of the legs, the front of your thighs. This is pretty intense and I wanna give you different options. It's called saddle pose. And you're gonna come onto your hands and knees and bring your feet a little wider. Now, option number one, which is the most intense one. So wait, if this is not available, you come to sit between your feet, your feet are outside. And you just stay here. Maybe you can even go back onto your elbows you see it's not available to me today so if this is okay for you feel free to lean back onto your hands onto your elbows maybe even lie all the way back if this is too much stretch one leg in front and keep just one knee bent so i'm having my right leg straight my left knee bent and this makes the pose much more accessible and i can lean back onto my elbows and I feel still a really good stretch along the front of my left thigh. Try not to lift the knee up. If it's too much on your back, you can also bend the other knee. So explore the pose. This one we're not holding very long. We're holding the whole pose for three minutes or if you alternating legs, then each leg straight for one and a half minutes. You're welcome. You could also lie back and place blocks underneath your back. You can let your head go or you can keep your chin to your chest. Targeted area is the front of your thighs. And again, this is the stomach and spleen meridian.
And for those of you with one leg straight, you can slowly come back up onto your hands, roll over onto your right cheek and release your left leg in front. Maybe give a little clap, massage. And then roll over onto your left cheek to bend the right knee and then find your way back. For straddle, half straddle, uh, saddle, I'm sorry, half saddle on this side and let the left leg fall out. Focus now is on the stretch along the front of your right thigh. For those of you lying back, the stretch is felt in both your thighs and you have about a minute left here. Good. For everybody, three more breaths. Stay present. <sighs> Maybe exhale through the mouth. And then walk your hands back. Slowly roll over onto the left. Straighten your leg. Those of you with both legs straight, Find your way also with your legs straight and then come to lie back and hug both knees into your chest. And just rock a little bit back and forth. And now again, think of your spine as your biggest energy channel. You're giving little sparks. And you can place your hands on top of your knees and just move the knees a little bit in circles away from each other and this is nice to release the groins and then move the other way bringing the knees towards each other and then come back to the middle take your arms out to the side now two options you can do a regular twisted pose where you let your legs fall over to the left and your head to the right. To go for a deeper twist, you could bring your right leg to cross over the left. This is called twisted roots. Press into the left foot, lift your hip a little bit to the right, maybe one inch or so, and then let your knees fall to the left. And feel free, use a pillow or block on the knees, whatever feels good. And also you can play with how high or how low you wanna bring the knees. Look over your right shoulder if it's okay for you. And we're just going to be here for two minutes on each side. If it's too much to look to the right, then just stay with your head looking straight up.
Good, three more breaths here. With your next breath, slowly inhale, bring the knees back to the middle. And then take them over to the right. If you did the twisted roots, unfold your legs, kind of wiggle them. And bring now your left leg to cross over the right. Move your hip one inch to the left before you let the knees fall to the right. And if you are just your knees together, also enjoy maybe putting a block between your knees or a pillow, anything that feels really good. And breathe into your lower back kidney area. Keep breathing with your face soft. 30 more seconds here. And then take your last three breaths. And with your third breath, slowly come back into the middle, hug the knees into your chest, and once again, rock a little bit back and forth. Good. Now have a block or something, um, a book or a roll or blanket, any prop, something you can play sacred and lift your hips up. So if you do have a block, place it right underneath your sacrum so that the edge of the block is kind of pressing into your lower back and then float your legs up. This is a supported shoulder stand situation. The knees are bent. And you just feel like you're releasing into the block. Face is completely soft. If this is too high, of course, you can also place the block a little lower in any way this is supporting you you could also bring your legs against the wall and just have a blanket or a pillow underneath so that you feel supported and can release here anybody wanting to go into a deeper stretch you could come into snail pose and swing your legs over your head and bring your knees next to your ears, if that's available to you. Uh, might be too intense for many of you. So always happy to give options. And we're just staying here for a minute or so. Keep breathing.
Good, and then slowly bend the knees and release your feet back down. If you were in snail pose, bring your legs all the way back down. Lift up so that you can remove the block or pillow or anything from underneath you. And then once again, hug the knees into your chest, rock a little bit back and forth. Do anything you feel you need to do before you can release into Shavasana and then find your own way into Shavasana. And maybe it's nice to roll up a blanket underneath your knees, which is beautiful to release the lower back, whatever you need to do. And then once you rest in Shavasana, please let your arms just rest in a way that your palms are facing up. Soften your face, your shoulders. Breathe into your belly, breathe into your heart. Everything feels soft. Take one more big breath in and then exhale through the mouth. And enjoy.
And then slowly begin to deepen your breathing. Very, very softly move your fingers, your toes. Stretch your arms over your head. Reach through your fingertips and through your toes and then through your heels to stretch the front and the back of your body. And then very slowly bend the knees, bring them into your chest. Once again, rocking ever so softly from side to side. And then rolling over onto your left side, your yin side. Give yourself another little moment here, just feeling the beauty of this little position. And then when you feel ready, slowly bring your hands or use your hands to bring yourself back up into a nice, comfortable seat. And keep the eyes closed and remember the snapshot you took of yourself at the beginning and notice if anything feels different now. Maybe more calm, more spacious, more grounded. more fluid and remember life happens now we're in it we don't need to wait for when anything is going to change but rather really embrace this moment and see what wants to live in us or with us or through us this moment and finding and allowing new ways new creativity And staying curious to see what it is that wants to come up now. Maybe some seeds we planted, we already forgotten. Finally, blossoming now. Please take your hands together in front of your heart. And let's seal and close our practice with one last sound of OM. And again, we'll make it a yin sound. So really soft, sweet sound of OM. Deep breath in. And then gently bow to yourself from your practice today. And then slowly release your hands and gently open your eyes. And thank you so much, guys. Hold on, I come closer so I can see you. Let me stop the recording first.